Okay, so integration for Pure 2. As you can see, we have three different um, objectives in the spec. Okay, and what's really good with this is even though I'm going to show you how to do all of this, we're going to recap this, I'm also going to show you how to double check this in, um, in your calculator. Okay, especially those of you who've got the class whiz white calculator, we can actually put the integration on there. So let's get started. So question number one. The curve C has this equation. Complete the table below with a value of y corresponding to x equals 1. Okay, so this is really simple. I think the biggest mistake on these types of questions is when people substitute, they do not use brackets. Okay, so can we make sure that when we're substituting when x equals 1 in our calculator, we're going to write, uh, we're going to, we're going to have 8 minus 2 lots of 1 minus 1. Okay, wherever there's an x, you're going to have a bracket and substitute it. Normally, this is only really effective when we have negative values. However, it's just great to, put, to get into the habit. So 8 minus 2 to the power of 0, which we know is 1. So 8 minus 1 is 7. seven. Brilliant. There's one more. It then says use a trapezium rule with all the values of y in the completed table to find an approximate value of the integral of this. Okay, so... First things first, the trapezium rule is as follows. Now, this is given to you in the formula sheet. Well, we're going to do the integral of this equals a half lots of h. Does anybody know what h is? It's our height, okay? It's our width, essentially. It's the difference between our x coordinate, x values. So what's the difference between 0 and 1? Well, what's the difference between 1 and 2? Well, what's the difference between 2 and 3? You'll notice that all of these have a difference of 1. This, this is our height, is 1. Okay? Multiplied by the first value of y, 7.5, plus the last value of y, 0, plus 2 lots of all the middle values. So 7 plus 6 plus 4, okay? So I always do 2 times this plus these two values and then multiply by the width and a half. It's exactly the same. We're literally just following a formula. I'm going to put this into my calculator exactly how this looks. Just to make sure that I'm not making any mistakes. I then get equals 83 over 4, which is approximately, well, no, 83 over 4 is definitely 20.75. What I'm saying is this is approximately 20.75. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check this into my calculator. So in my calculator, I can substitute this in. I'm going to show you how this looks now. So 8 minus 2 to the power of um, x. So alpha x minus 1. Okay, so when I substitute this in, Okay, so using the integration button, I've just copied this, 8 minus 2 lots of x minus 1. I can see I get 21.17. We got 20.75. That's pretty close, isn't it? So we know that we're roughly right. Okay, if this was 100 and something and you got 20, would that be right? No. Okay. Yes. How could we get this more accurate is if we were to use more strips. Okay, the more strips we use, the more accurate we're going to get. So, it then says, figure one shows a sketch of the curve C with the equation y equals x minus 2 to the power of x minus 1, where 0 is less than x is less than 4. Okay, the curve C meets the x-axis at the point A and meets the y-axis at the point B. The region R shown, in, uh, shown shaded in figure one is bounded by the curve C in straight line through A and B. Use your answer to part B to find an approximate value for the area of R. So, 
technically what we've done is our curve already looks like this between B and A. Okay. We are 20.75 is actually this whole area. So if I want to find the shaded area, I'm then going to have to take away the area of the triangle made by A and B. Okay. So I need to find the um, coordinates of A and B. First of all, on this line here, what do we know about coordinate B? Zero. And then we can figure out B. So we know our, um, our X equals zero. So if our X equals zero, that means for X minus two lots of zero minus one equals B, doesn't it? Okay. So it's a two mark question. You don't have to show you're working. However, eight minus two to the negative one equals B. So eight minus a half equals B. B equals 15 over two. Yeah? So we know B is equals 15 over two. Brilliant, so that's our height essentially. Then A, what do we know about this coordinate at A? What does Y equal? Zero. So now we know that zero equals eight minus two to the power of X minus one. So eight equals two to the power of X minus one. What does eight actually equal, guys? Two cubes equals two to the X minus one. So three equals X minus one. So X equals four. So this is four. So now area of a triangle, 15 over two is my height, my base is four. Divide this by two, this is gonna give me. So the answer is 15. <laughs> Wait there, 20.75 minus 15. Um, is going to give me 23 over 4. Uh, I could have just done this in my head, which equals 5.75 units squared. Okay, so Miss has been a bit silly. <laughs> well, it, at least you know how to work this out if you needed to. However, in the table, it's actually already given us the coordinates. So we already know zero, this is where 7.5, which is our 15 over two, and then our four zero. Okay, it's already given us A and B. Okay, so just make sure you read the question as well. Sometimes, because we're zooming in and out all the time, we miss that. But well done for those of you who spotted it. And there we have it, six mark question. Question number two. Okay, so figure two shows a sketch of part of the curve with this equation. The curve has a turning point at A. If it has a turning point at A, what does that mean? It means the gradient equals zero there, okay? So we know that the gradient equals zero there. So when it says use calculus to find the x coordinate of A, it wants us to differentiate. So we know that y equals 4x cubed plus 9x squared minus 30x minus 8, okay? So dy by dx equals 12x squared plus 18x minus 30. Now when does this equal 0? Minus 30 equals 0, okay? So x equals 1 and x equals minus 5 over 2. And then I'm just going to substitute that back into the original equation. Um, however, that can't be right. Oh, yeah, the x coordinate of a is 1. Yeah, so what's the y coordinate then? Uh, 4. We don't reject it. It just doesn't want it right now. 4 plus 9. Minus 30, minus 8, minus 25. So why is minus 25? So the coordinate of A is 1, minus 25. X equals minus 5 or 2. That will be somewhere over this side somewhere, but we don't need to worry about that because we can't see that part of the graph. So we've shown the X coordinate 
point of A. It then says the curve crosses the x-axis at the points B to 0 and C minus a quarter 0. Finite region R shown shaded in figure T is bound by the curve and the line AB and the x-axis. Use integration to find the exact area of the finite region. Okay, so now we need to use integration to help us do this. Now, in the mark scheme, there'll be multiple ways to do this type of question. Okay? But this question, personally, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, I know what I'm going to do. I am going to Find the area, okay, now remember there's no right, or I mean there obviously are some wrong ways, but there's no right way, it just depends how your brain's working here. I'm going to find the area of this part here, number one, so I'm going to integrate the curve, okay, between uh, one, and minus a quarter, okay? And then I'm going to add on the area of this triangle, which we know the base is 1 and the height is 25. So 1 times 25 divided by 2. This is how I'm going to work out the area, okay? It, with these types of questions, you can do so many different ways. So let's see how this goes then. So, we need to integrate this and then substitute in the formula. Now, you will need to show what's happening. So, increase the power by 1. 4 divided by the new power is gone. Increase the power by 1. Cubed divided by the new power. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Increase by the new power. 2 minus 15. Increase by power x. Now, I'm going to substitute in the values of 1 and negative a quarter. Now, when I substitute in 1, minus, and then I need to substitute in minus a quarter, it's really important that we use brackets at all stages. Okay, it might seem a little bit longer. However, you're going to have 1 to the power of 4 plus 3 lots of 1 cubed minus 15 lots of 1 squared minus 8 lots of 1. I mean, with 1, it's pretty simple because we just need to do 1 plus 3 is 4 minus 15 minus 8. Okay. However, with the negative a quarter, this is when we need to then make sure that we're definitely using our brackets. It's so important to use brackets when we're dealing with negatives because our calculators. Um, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to literally type that whole thing in. So. I have the first one, I'm going to get minus 19, okay, for the second one, I need to get a bracket involved. Now, what might make your life easier is if you just do minus 1 over 4, press equals, and then keep that as answer. So now you can do bracket answer to the power of 4 plus 3 bracket answer cubed minus 15 bracket answer squared minus 8 bracket answer. So I'm going to get... 261 over 256. So we're going to get minus 19 minus that. So minus 19 minus answer. Minus 19 minus answer is going to give me minus 5125 over 256. Now knowing what you're thinking, how have we now got a negative area? It's because we're going under the x-axis. So now we do the positive of this. So 5125 over 256. And then we need to add on that positive area of 25 over 2. 
So in your calculator, just turns it by negative 1, plus 25 over 2. I'm going to get 8,325 over 256. It wants it to two decimal places, 32.5195, etc., which equals 32.52 units squared. Okay, question three. So, figure three shows a sketch of part of a curve with this equation. So, um, the curve C has a maximum turning point at the point A and a minimum turning point at the origin. The line touches the line L touches the curve C and the point A. The x coordinate of A is minus four, and the x coordinate of B is two. So now we know this is two something. This is minus four something. So we can literally substitute that into here to find out what y is. Okay, it doesn't matter which one we substitute in, we will get the same answer. Okay? So when I substitute in any of these, I get y equals 4. Okay? So we know that y equals 4. This is my line then, y equals 4. So, I want to find um, the finite region and I need to use integration. Now, remember, whenever we integrate, technically, when we integrate, we find the area under the curve. So we would, if we integrate, we would find this one under the curve, right? So what we actually need to do is find the area of this rectangle. And then minus the area under the curve. Because when we integrate, so when we integrate 1 over a x cubed plus 3 quarters x squared with respect to x in between b, which we know is 2, and a, which we know is minus 4, we're only going to get this area, this green bit. So I need to find the area of this whole rectangle, which we know between a and b, is 6 and the height is 4. So I need to do 6 times 4 minus the area, um, minus this integral. Okay? Okay, so 6 times 4 is 24 minus 2 minus 4. So we're going to get increased power by 1, 4 divided by the new power. 1 over 8 divided by 4 is 1 over 24. Increase the power by 1, uh, 32. Increase power by 1, x cubed, divide by the new power, should give us a quarter. Yeah. So now I'm going to have 24 minus. So when I substitute in 2, I'm going to have 1 over 32 times 2 to the power of 4, plus a quarter times 2 cubed, minus. Now remember, it's minus minus this. Oh my golly. So then I'm going to have 1 over 32, lots of minus 4 to the power of 4, plus 1 over a quarter to the minus 4 cubed. Okay? So I'm going to have 24 minus. Now I'm going to start with this one first. So this is 5 over 2 minus... Minus minus 8. Okay. So I'm going to have 24 minus. So 5 over 2 minus minus 8. It's 21 over 2. 24 minus answer is going to give me 27 over 2. Which is 13.5 units squared. Okay, so I know this is seven marks. It didn't take that long to do. You just have to really know what's happening here. Question four. So this is a nine mark question. Part A, nice and simple. Find the integral of this. So step one, we're going to put it in indice form, yeah? So I'm going to multiply out first. So I'm going to have the integral of 10x to the power of 3 over 2 
minus 20x with respect to x. So when I integrate this, increase the power by 1, 5 over 2, divide by the new power. What's 10 divided by 5 over 2? This gives me 4. And then minus, increase the power by 1 squared, divide by the new power, 10. Now, because we have no limits here to substitute in, we have to make sure we write plus c. Okay? Nice and easy, two marks. Uh, four. Wow, was that four marks? Okay, so now um, it wants us to then find, we can see that the curve starts from nine, goes to here, and then it also goes to this bit. So, however, we need to find the integral between nine and four, and then we need to add on also the integral between four and zero, but remember, the integral between four and zero, because it's below the line, it's gonna give us a negative number so we take the positive yeah which you know the modulus okay so we take the positive we take the modulus of it so between nine and four now we know from earlier four to the five over two minus ten lots of squared and then remember we're going to add on the modulus between 4 and 0 of the same thing, okay? So if we have a negative number, we need to add on the modulus. So what I'm going to have is, I'm going to just put this into my calculator. Between 9 and 4, I get 194. Plus, now if I put in between 4 and 0... I get minus 32, but remember the modulus of minus 32 is positive 32. 194 plus 32 is 226 units squared. Again, it's nice and easy. Nine marks, and we've actually managed to do that whole question in under three minutes. Okay, question five. So, figure three shows a sketch of part of a curve with this equation. The finite region is bounded by the x-axis and the curve. Find the integral of this. Okay, step one, just normal integration. Increase the power by one, divide by the new power. Increase the power by one, divide by the new power. Oh negative and then this is going to be plus c okay so that's a nice and easy integration three marks it says hence find the area of s so to find the area we need to integrate 3x minus x to the 3 over 2 with respect to x and we need two limits we know the first limit is here at zero the second limit is when at this coordinate and what do we know about this coordinate y equals zero so now I can solve this equation. So 0 equals 3x minus x to the 3 over 2. 3x equals x to the 3 over 2. If I divide both sides by x, I get 3 equals x to the half. What am I now going to do to both sides? Square it, so 9 equals x. So this is between 9 and 0. So between 9 and 0. So that means I need to substitute in between 9 and 0 3 lots of something squared over 2 minus 2 over 5 lots of something to the power of 5 over 2. Okay? And obviously we're going to substitute in 9. And then we know that when we substitute in 0, however, we are going to get 0 in this case. So I then get 114.557. It doesn't say how 
Okay, this is wrong because I accidentally typed this part into my calculator. Remember, whenever you're using your calculator, do this. So it's 24.3 units squared. Now, sometimes it will say show everything. You will have to show that you substituted in. The calculator is good just to double check. And then here we have 24.3. Perfect, so well done. So that's just a few taste questions of differentiation. I mean integration. <laughs>